So with this cylinder, you want to be able to put the elliptical shape and use the grid to help you with, okay? So as I come over to the side here, I take a look, and just from this paper here, if you have a square like this, and <coughs> crossing the diagonals is going to help you find the center right here, and just thinking about this is if you want another plus sign right into the side, it's going to bring you to this measured edge on each side right here. Okay, And if you were to put in a curve into this side on all four, it would make the, the elliptical shape, or in this case a circle. But from the corner to the center, if you can visualize this divided into thirds, that's kind of where the point is. And if you get one point, you can drag it across and visually kind of just place it where it has to be. So then if I just went and made an octagon shape of that, the geometry would be there. And there's a way to find a third, but I'm just having you estimate that part. <clears throat> just like a pie or a pizza or anything like that, it would curve in between each of these and give you a, a circle. <clears throat> in the point of the isometric part, it's going to be an ellipse because it's at an angle to it. So just as you see this uh, demonstration page right here, I'm just going to place this right about in the middle top next to it, right in the section here. Okay, And <clears throat> taking a look at maybe it's going to be about this wide, you can kind of estimate how wide to make it. You can even minimize a little bit. And then once you find that, just locate. this, this uh, isometric type circle. And you can even do the same idea. You can make it three across. Okay, So right there, I'll heavy this up just a little bit so you can see it. And within there, if you can see the center line, since it's divided into thirds, there's the midpoint of this. It's already kind of measured out a little bit. <clears throat> if you did cross the diagonals, you would find that here's a vertical line, there's the point. Here it is, cutting across. And now, the tricky part is between the quarter side of this diagonal, you're trying to find a third section. And it's almost right in the section there. So now, if I drew a straight line, that would be the, the buildup of it. And now I just need to corner and curve this around. I don't need to do the back, but just as in the cartoon, you can see the hidden line. All I need to do is go vertically up to how tall I want to make this. This is a tangent line, tangent to the edge of that elliptical shape. And once I get up here, I can do the same thing. I can see this connected piece. There it is. And just round that section off. And for that part I have this cylindrical shape. So very easily it, it pinpoints itself up there. You could do it the other way too if you want to do it from bottom to top. But in this case with the shading here I'm just going to give a little bit of an outline on the base. Go a little bit vertical. Don't have to worry too much because I can lose the line in the shading and kind of pinpointing in there. And you want to remember that the edges of these are very round. They're not pointed. The light source is coming from the right to the left. So when I take a look at this section here, I can see that it's going to have a little reflected light. Here's the base tone, which is the darkest value. The three-quarter tone, the half tone. And you have the quarter tone for the highlight. So that six-tone scale. And then the shading piece at the top is very similar. So I could start off here just to get a, something on the paper to be what they call a gradient going from dark to light. And now just imagine. Didn't have to make it too big, just kind of. And since I'm going with the form, it makes it a little bit easier. That's going to be the darkest value, the base tone. The light source is coming here, but just on that edge, I'm going to shade it real lightly and let the highlight be just offset. 
and as it starts to get darker it's going to go quarter tone, half tone, the base tone being the darkest, and then the reflected light. So initially that's the start, and then up at the top I'm just going to shade it so I lose that outline and start to build this up and I'll let this part be seen as well. So just two sketches to build that up. Again, just kind of a nice, smooth transition, the gradient coming across. And I'm just going to go horizontal with the cast shadow so it makes it very easy. And just an arch. Just a simple connective piece like that. Once you get the linear part, go ahead and shade it into a nice gradated tone there. <laughs> 